Has your garden become an absolute ghost town instead of a hive of activity for pollinators? Well, if so, you're not alone. Justin here with SK Greenhouse, and today I'm talking to you about my top seven perennials that are really going to drive those pollinators to the garden. Let's jump in. First one on the list is Allium. This is an award winning perennial that features glossy green foliage. It's going to spread about 15 inches wide, 15 inches tall great for full sun but the reason you want to grow this is for its flower clusters around late spring and summer you're going to have these big huge ball shaped purple cluster blooms that are going to appear and this is going to put on an outstanding show the type of allium i have with me today is called millennium this is definitely an award-winning perennial for its strong performance if you have trouble with deer this is going to be deer resistant and it's also going to be fragrant while attracting those bees and butterflies. Next one on the list is coneflower, or the botanical name is going to be echinacea. I love these perennials for their durability. They're going to come back reliably each year. They take the hot scorching sun, no problems. They're going to bloom late spring all the way until fall. So this one's going to keep going, folks. And even after the blooms are done, you're going to have these seed heads that can feed your goldfinches all winter. I love coneflowers because there's so many different colors. There's pinks and oranges and reds and whites. The one I have with me today is called Kismet. It's a yellow coneflower, but there's other varieties uh, like Cheyenne Spirit that's going to get a little bit taller, so it's going to make a nice backdrop and then bloom in multiple colors in one. Coneflowers are disease resistant, pest resistant, and yes, even deer resistant. Up next on the list is blanket flower, or another name is Gallardia. This is uh, a variety called Mesa Yellow. It features a clear yellow daisy-like bloom, which is a lot different from the blanket flowers you're probably used to seeing, which is, is more of an orange or red bloom. I love this plant. It's extremely tough and durable. It prefers poor soil. That's right, as long as the soil drains well, this is gonna perform beautifully. It's gonna start blooming late spring and go all the way into fall. No deadheading is required, but it may help it continue to bloom. And yes, this is extremely pest and disease resistant while bringing those pollinators to your garden. Up next, we have Lantana. This is one of my favorites because, well, it's a long bloomer. Once you plant Lantana, it almost starts blooming immediately as it warms up and it's gonna bloom until frost. Now, I know what you're thinking, is Lantana a perennial? Well, not all of them are, especially here in zone 8A. We were 7B last year, got changed to an 8A. Miss Huff, however, is a very reliable uh, flower. It, it's hardy in zones seven through 10. It's very disease resistant, pest resistant, and very rarely do I not see pollinators buzzing around this plant. Now, I will say, you're gonna to wanna to give it some room because it will grow into a very large bush eventually, probably four to five foot tall and wide. But if you got the space, definitely check this one out. Up next is a good old standby. This is Veronica, or you might know it as Speedwell. Look at those beautiful blue candle-like blooms that are starting to emerge from this plant. This variety right here is called Moody Blues, but there's so many different colors of Veronica. There's pinks and whites and purples. I love it for its drought resistance. Once established, you pretty much this is a carefree plant. Um, if you cut it back, it will help it to continue to bloom. It's gonna start blooming in the spring and it'll last through summer. It's very, very hardy. It's gonna be hardy in zones three through 11. And there's a lot of different types out there. Some are more upright, some are ground covers. So find the one that best fits for you plant it around your garden and drive those pollinators crazy. If you're looking for a tough as nails perennial that's gonna bloom for months and months on end, let me introduce you to the cat's pajamas. No, seriously, that's what this variety of Nepeta or cat mint is called, and I absolutely love it. It's an excellent ground cover. It's definitely gonna drive those bees and butterflies and beneficial insects to your garden. It's gonna thrive in full sun. It's extremely drought tolerant and deer resistant and it's gonna start blooming in late spring and it's gonna go all the way to fall with no pruning or shearing needed. Finally, let me show you my number one bulletproof pollinating perennial. 
If none of the others work for you, this one certainly will. It's none other than Bee Balm or another name, Minarda. And this is a lavender color here, but you're gonna find it in pinks and whites and reds and blues. And I love these, they're very versatile. You're gonna find some varieties that stay nice and short, some that will get nice and tall, so it'll make an excellent backdrop to your garden. This will not only attract bees and butterflies, but also hummingbirds. So you get a little added bonus there. These are gonna to continue to bloom all the way until fall. Deadheading will encourage them to rebloom, but it's not 100% necessary. Place in full sun and watch the show. Well, there you go, folks. There are my top seven perennials for driving pollinators to your garden. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you're gonna get updated every time we release a new video. And until next time, become a plant person.